And Corey, yo, hey, you too. What up? What y'all niggas on? Affiliate Wild Street. That's the boy. That's crazy as hell. Affiliate Wild. How the fuck is you a uh, Twitch affiliate Wild Stream? That's crazy, fo. Damn. And you got niggas over here like me that's grinding to get affiliate. Fo no. Like, what the fuck? But hey, now you got 150 now. Hip hop is down. The world. Hip hop is not down. The world is now. Um. Seen this shit. I want to check it out. Because I agree with this title. The world is down. But hip hop ain't. You know? And I agree with this. So. Yeah, let's let's uh let's, let's get into this shit. Facts. I see that shit on daily basis. People say movies not as good as they used to be, shows not as good as they used to be, games not as good as they used to be. Um, motherfucking um, music's not as good as they used to be. People say that shit on a daily basis. You can't hear it. Oh shit! What the fuck? Let let let's act like they didn't just happen, people. Hold on. Let's let's do this again. What the fuck just happened? Have you heard anyone say recently video games are not as good? As I was saying, yes. Video games not good as they used to be. This is what people be saying. They say movies not as good as they used to be. Shows not good as they used to be. Music not as good as they used to be. What else people be saying? Oh, yeah. All type of shit. You feel me? People be saying that shit on a daily basis. And I always come back and I always like, I always like come back and I say it like this. Well... I disagree with that because music has always been the same to me, even since like when I was like a little boy, like when I was a shorty, even like games, movies, or like whatever, right? It's like, I believe it's just really just the world. I believe it's just people. Maybe y'all just like tab just seeing shit. Maybe it's just you. Maybe you growing up and you getting fatigued and you just don't like this shit no more. You know, like, come on, man. As they used to be. Movies are not as good as they used to be. Cars. The and far as game, matter of fact, matter of fact, I can even say this too. People be saying games is not as good as they used to be. Well, gang, how about you just like stop playing the same game? Because it be the same niggas that be saying that shit. Y'all ass be playing motherfucking um 2K and Call of Duty. That's all you play. Matter of fact, like, how about you try like branch out and play other games? You feel me? Stop just trying to play 2K and Call of Duty like your whole fucking life. Like, come on, folks. Hey, the NFL music is not as good as it used to be. And no, you're not crazy. There's a lot of truth to these statements. Yeah. Now, hip hop is not dying, but you have to be totally narrow minded to think that it's as dominant as it used to be. Definitely and most not. of you know it's me not. as the hip hop guy, and don't worry, not I'm not about though. to just shit all over this genre that made me. I still love it, and I ain't going anywhere, so get that yeah. out of your head. But most people who've been discussing this topic exhaust these same old arguments. The beats are repetitive, the lyrics have no meaning, they only rap about murder, girls, drugs, and money. There are too many clones. They're just trying to go viral and not create art. They're clout chasing, violence, blah, blah, blah. Now, those are some good points yeah. and they ain't wrong. But the problem is so much deeper than that. The truth is our world, our species, human civilization is advancing into something far more complex than what we used to be. And I know I'm coming off extremely pretentious and annoying and trying to be too smart. Just let me cook for a second, because I really think I got something here. Now, I'll start by saying something positive about hip-hop. There have never yeah. been as many artists making high-quality hip-hop records as there is right now. Let me rephrase that. Hip-hop is still really f***ing good. But most people are just too busy or lazy to go and look for it. And listen, I'm included in that. If you Facts. And I, I just pretty much was trying to say that. It's like people... The problem is, it's just people don't branch out no more. People like fans don't try to look for new shit to go listen to because you have your one favorite artist, right? You all, and you stick to that artist. You don't try to go listen to other music. You don't try to listen to other genres. So you'll probably say, man, hip hop is all boring. These niggas sound the same. Well, again, how about you go fast shit, different shit to listen to? Because it probably is probably about a good, like, 100 artists that are underground right now that deserve to, like, blow up. And that's, like, super, super good, different sound, all type of shit. But you ain't going to take time out of your day to go find them. You're not. Be honest, you're not. You're not going to take the time out of your day to go find them, niggas. Shit, it could be your homeboy that could be the next R, but you ain't gonna support that nigga like you support these rappers, but we ain't gonna get to none of that shit, though. If you want the good stuff, you gotta dig for it, but most of you won't. Which brings me to my first point. Oh, you are being overexposed to media, which mm -hmm. leads you to being paralyzed by choice yep. and therefore never feeling fulfilled. 100,000 songs are being uploaded to Spotify every day. 3.7 million YouTube videos are uploaded every day. There are dozens of high quality movie streaming services uploading millions. 
I agree. Millions of hours of content every day That's why I tell and having too to many options games, has been proven to be a bad thing. In 2000, psychologists from Columbia and Stanford University published a study about jams. On a regular day at a local food market, people would find a display table with 24 different kinds of jams. Then on another day at that same food market, people were given only six different types of jam choices. The store sold more jars of jam when they only offered six different choices. It's easy to feel confident and Fortnite? fulfilled that what you chose the, the right jam when there's a Six money jars. Play no games. But when there's 24, you start like to feel life. overwhelmed. You start to wonder why there are so many in the first place, and you realize it's just less stressful to not choose any. Right. You shouldn't feel bad that you can't choose what is the best music or content to consume out of the millions of options. It's much easier to just listen to an album or song that you already know is good, one you've been listening to for years, rather than to dive into the haystack trying to find the needle that could be your new favorite song. And that's what most people are doing. In 2021, 70 percent of the USA market was listening to old music over new music. But let's say you wanted to navigate oh, the millions of songs I have not played every Fortnite month. This is what that arduous process would look like. First, you'd have to stay What's up to date with like hundreds that? of artists and when they are dropping, which means you'd have to follow some sort of social media page that promotes new music. But those pages generally only post what's considered popular since they need likes and engagement on their posts so they can right. grow and sell promotion to labels and smaller artists. I'm not hating, life is expensive and I understand people gotta make money. I mean, this exact it's problem so has destroyed <laughs> countless music YouTubers. Yeah, so there used to be dozens of channels harvesting a community of music fans. Now there are only Smash a few left because if you use three seconds of a song in a video, you get, you co get copyright strike. That's why I don't react to music. I mean, that's why like, when I react to music, I don't upload none of that shit because I ain't got time for none of that shit. Fuck me, these motherfuckers. The labels be thirsty. Copyright claimed and they take your money. How are you supposed to make videos about music if you can't play the music? And if you can't make money off the video, it's too expensive and time consuming to put the care necessary to build a following. Every Ox Battle video I've uploaded since April has been demonetized, which I'm Damn. not gonna lie, has kind of destroyed the series. Which is why it's important for me to thank today's sponsor, Aura, for helping support the channel. Aura. Are you tired of receiving those spam hey, calls chat, from unknown members the every day? I, I, I am. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to those but information, I got like a or you can go to aura.com slash patrickcc to start your two week free trial. Link is also in the description. Thanks, Aura. So fans on. can't rely Pretty on sure tastemakers the and they have to follow on. the you artist directly. Money, but shit. whenever an I artist posts on their social media, new song dropped or out now, the algorithm actively hides the posts because Instagram and TikTok do not want them posting anything that is going to take the user off their app and onto another. So yeah. even the artists that you follow and want to be notified when they drop won't show up on your feed. The only way an artist can get around this is paying for exposure through ads. Therefore, the Talk artists shit. with the most money, whether that be independent or signed to a major label, are the ones that end up on your feed. We all know that money doesn't buy talent, and 99.9% .9 of the time, the talented artists don't have the money to you rise to the rich. top of the algorithm. So then the artists become desperate. And can you really blame them? They begin performing no. gimmicks and antics on TikTok to get a crumb of organic exposure, like making some stupid song that only people like as a soundbite in the background of other TikToks. Why and when the artist gets rewarded for this up. strategy, they do one of two things. They get resentful that people liked this stupid thing that they created for attention, and then they go back to making the actual music that they wanted to create, only for that music to fall on deaf ears because the listeners were never really fans of them. Or they continue to make gimmicks Facts. hoping to go viral again, leading to the repetitive cycle of nonsense that nobody actually likes. So then why are record labels signing these gimmicks knowing that they don't really have that much to offer? Won't a label make more money off the next Tyler the Creator, J. Cole, or Kendrick Lamar? Well, yes, but that's way too risky. For around 100 years, an artist had like one way to make a music career possible. Well, they would record doing. a demo, perform shows in the closest city to their home, and hopefully gain a reputation for being a promising talent. Maybe they would get the attention of a radio or club DJ and get their music broadcasted to a larger but still generally localized market. Then music <coughs> labels hired A&Rs to scout talent like a football coach, going city to city right. visiting small clubs, bars, and listening to local radio stations to see who has potential for a record deal. If the artist was lucky enough to get a record deal, they would have a team dedicated to helping develop the artist, like no fine tune more, their they? music, image, it's and creative direction, act. then push their music out to a national market and see what cities take a liking to their new talent. And as you can imagine, this was a massive time and financial investment, and record labels would continuously try and market these artists even if the fans weren't immediately impressed. Why? Because they believed in their talent and spent so much effort to discover and develop them. 
Labels would also scout and sign a wide variety of different talents because if one artist didn't work, well, it didn't make sense to push the exact same sound. These a were trained professionals. They were humans using their human experience to invest and promote what they and think they do other like humans would like. And it worked like that almost flawlessly and for like 80 years. <laughs> okay, flawlessly might be a little bit of a stretch. The old way made it basically impossible for a new artist or an upcoming artist to break through. Like we were way too reliant on record labels. There were probably so many great artists that never got discovered because an A&R for a music label just never happened to be where they were when they were were performing in some bar or bowling alley. For the average person, the only music that existed was stuff that was on the radio or in movies or on MTV or just what their friends liked. But that's also what made the music so iconic is because like everybody knew the same stuff. Then the internet came which was great for a little bit, yep. until it wasn't. It the internet everything. created the opportunity for any artist to get their music out to the world. So individually for artists, it was so much better, but it destroyed music communities. Music yep. that once unified us is now dividing us. Before everyone had smartphones, the internet was a fringe hobby that introverted people and children used. Chameleon Air, Soldier Boy, and the entire SoundCloud rap era used the internet to create a wave so dominant that it changed the music industry. Yep. From 2012 to roughly 2018, SoundCloud was a place for innovative, interesting, and counterculture rap music. Being a SoundCloud rapper was perceived as someone who had a failing music career, which made the community strong stronger and more cult-like rooting for these rappers to win. But then the internet rapper became a normalized, formulaic career path that labels figured out how to dominate and the community aspect around internet rap disappeared. The algorithm made the process of discovering talent less about taste and more about objective data. a rs are now just data analysts who look for boosts in streaming data. Record labels don't care how the music sounds, they just care if people are listening. But as we explained before, people are not necessarily listening to music for the same reasons that they used to. And sometimes the algorithm or streaming data is just wrong. It just doesn't mean that the song is good or that the artist is objectively talented. Talented. It could be random. It could mean nothing. Think about the YouTube algorithm. You watch one video about dogs. And all of a sudden, every single video, every your whole recommendation, your whole recommendation is gonna be uh, just gonna be about vids of dogs, so Yes, on phone them. That's true. You see another one recommended to you. Mm -hmm. You click that. Now three are recommended. You go down one YouTube wormhole and your whole feed is transformed into only dog content. Music algorithms my, operate my similarly. Let's say you listen to a couple pop smoke songs on Spotify. You start getting recommended similar artists who are using the same style mm -hmm. beats and sounds. Before you know it, your Discover Weekly is flooded with every Brooklyn drill and UK drill rapper in existence. You were in a drill mood for a couple of days and now Spotify made it your entire listening experience. Then the upcoming artists are incentivized to copy someone else's sound because the only way they'll make it into the algorithm is yes. if they can be categorized alongside another bigger artist. So you have to manually trick the algorithm and listen to a bunch of different stuff on purpose to get recommended a decent variety or not rely on the algorithm at all. But it's hard not to rely on them when they're extremely convenient. And this is a little bit of a tangent, but it's and crazy. The other night I was driving and I was going to pick up some food for dinner and appreciate there's a car coming shit, at me and their headlights just shit. totally blinded me. I didn't say anything. I didn't make a noise. I'm trying to get I didn't like text you though, anyone. I didn't call anyone. To get like but I did think broke. to myself like, <laughs> dang, their lights are so bright. And I started thinking about, okay, is this legal or like, mm -hmm. can they get in trouble or why are they so bright? Just all these questions about these bright headlights. Shit, I pick up the way, food, the pack, I get home, way, I pop on YouTube, and what do I see? A video titled, Blinding Headlights Are a Growing Problem on US what Roads. And no, this was not a new video. It's six months old. And no, what I don't watch fuck? content about cars or about headlights or social problems. And yeah, I watched the video. And I'm honestly glad it was recommended to me because I really wanted to know. <laughs> like, aside from this being kind of scary and creepy, like, how is the algorithm inside my head? You know so crazy? This happens to me on a daily basis. I could be talking about some shit like, damn. Like, I remember one time I was talking about, like, I think PlayStation, like, fold. Like, a play, you know, PS4 and shit. Ooh, ooh, this was years ago. I was thinking about myself, like, damn, I wonder how much, like, PS4 was all now. And I remember I was scrolling through my phone. I don't know if I was on Instagram. I was on something. I don't know what I was on. I, I don't know if it was Google something. But I remember it was something about like it had record. It, it had like recommend me 
Something about PS4s with like low prices. I swear to God, on my whole, on my mama's life, that's what I saw. I don't know how. I've never searched no shit like that. Yo, our phones be listening to us. I don't know why that, and that happens to me a lot. Anything I talk about is gonna be on my phone the next day. Watch, it's probably gonna be on my phone like tomorrow. Watch. Anything I talk about, it'd be on my phone, Ed, folks. It's incredibly convenient. The it's convenience crazy. of being recommended content, or in this case, music, is slowly destroying our autonomy. You yes. have to actively go out of your way and make small Shit choices, crazy. such as like what music you want to listen to, to defeat the algorithm. Which is why editorial playlists <laughs> that are created by humans should be a saving grace. Keyword should be. A human analyzes the streaming data, then listens to confirm if it's a good song or a unique song, then adds it to a playlist for people to listen to and enjoy. But unfortunately, yeah. Spotify playlists are corrupt. Shocker. They are doing the exact same thing they've been doing to radio forever. Payola. Whoever pays the most money to the tastemakers, aka the radio DJs and playlist curators, makes it to the top. Upcoming artists realize social media is not a fair market and they get desperate for exposure by sacrificing their art. And the fans who are too busy to become full-time A&Rs get screwed because they think that what is being recommended to them or what's on the radio or what's on Rap Caviar is all that music has to offer right now. But the truth is, right now there are so many objectively great artists making great music. Like probably more than ever. Just take the YouTube channel Colors as one example. Every few days they upload a video of a talented artist who likely has a full catalog of great music you can go but nobody's gonna take the time out they did go listen to that shit because you comfortable with your favorite artists but you'll be the same motherfucker saying that like damn there's no new artists all shit sound the same woo woo but it's like folk go try to find some new artists then folk like come on man enjoy so why do you feel deprived of great music when it's obviously not that hard to find well that's because it's not necessarily the music that you're craving it's community it's a sense of belonging. You have been lied to. You have been told that you should be more ambitious. You should be a boss, a hardworking Sigma grindset demon chasing a life filled with experiences, oh. material things, and forget all that having a family simple life nonsense. Young people feel this pressure. We feel like no matter what we're doing in life, it's not as good or as fulfilling as what it could be. I mean, just open any social media app and you'll be overloaded with all the amazing things you could be doing. Yeah. In fact, you probably got this grindset mentality not from people in your neighborhood or the people who've been stuck in your town. No, nah, I got my grind set mentality by myself. I didn't watch no video. Uh, I promise you all my life, I never watched no video. I, nobody ever told me. I just got this shit from the shit I've been through in my life. That's it. That's why I got the mess I do now, just shit I've been through. People really be sitting up mm, watching like motivational type videos. I mean, you do you, I guess. I don't, I don't watch that shit town for generations, but rather other people online. Over half of Americans spend more than 50% of their time online, and although we are more connected than ever digitally, we still feel alone. 34% of Americans expect to spend more time by themselves, with 37% saying they don't interact with anyone at least once a week. Damn. Now, most of us are alone because most of us don't really have a third place. Think of your home as your first place, where right. you spend you know, most of your time. And then work or school as your second place. Where is your third place? place? A, a home away from home, where the people internet. feel comfortable and at ease. A place where you can pop in and out with little or no money. The Coffee internet. shops, barber shops, pubs, plazas, recreational spaces, YMCAs, parks, oh. record shops, skate parks, hangout spots where we would bump into acquaintances interact with strangers and build a sense of community. Yeah. A place where maybe you could listen to music or discuss music or argue about music with people. Now there is one glaringly obvious third place for music people, concerts. But in hip hop, concerts are a mess. I've never been they in a concert suck. day in hip -hop my life are... and I'll never go. Hell no, I ain't got time to be next to like sweaty ass people. By far the worst live music experiences that there is. They are typically bad performers Damn. with a crowd full of people too cool to participate. And on top of that, the shows are insanely expensive. I spent $1,000 on a Drake concert ticket and saw people filming themselves to show their social media followers that they were at a Drake concert. Rappers <sighs> lip sync the words while the DJ just plays the MP3 file you can hear online. They might ad lib a few times and jump around. So little by little, 
people are not going to as many rap concerts because it's just a big waste of time and money. To no surprise, rappers who are great live performers have more longevity in the genre because that in-person well, yeah, real know. experience will last so much longer and mean so much more than any digital experience. We are using our phones as our third place. Some of you, Kai Sinat's bedroom on your screen is literally your third place. We can immerse ourselves into any subgenre, niche, forum, and, and interact with other digital versions of people. But as I stated before, oversaturation and money has made it impossible to figure out where on the internet is actually worth spending your time. Playboy Cardi and his opium label artists, as well as Yeet, are dominating right now because they built a community. The fans have basically a dress code. He's not fucking lying because Cardi fans so deep. I had a Cardi fan in my chat like a week or two ago. I'm never watched Cat for 10 minutes. <laughs> Damn, you don't fuck with Lil, Lil C Nat. You don't fuck with Lil Cat C Nat. But shit, folks. What was I saying? Um, Cardi fans are so deep that I had like a Cardi fan in my chat like a week or two ago. Told me, hey, gang, Cardi dropped. Oh, you just don't care? Hey, man. You know, I I, I can see why. I fuck with Cat, though. But yeah, hey, hey. One of the Cardi fans like came out chat was like, hey, Cardi dropped. And I don't listen to Cardi, but that was just so random. That's how deep that nigga fan base is. Like, that was the most random shit of all time. Cardi dropped, nigga. Oh, my God. He was like, Cardi dropped. Like, the nigga never been my child for just a random ass nigga. Hey, nigga, Cardi dropped, nigga. What you doing, Cardi dropped? Yo, them opium fans different. Rick Owens, they dog it, chains, dude. and trench coats to look like Dark Souls characters. Yeet yeah. has invented his own language that the fans have written a dictionary for. They even have their own handshake. Eology. And yeah, sure, you might think it's cringe, but it's actually kind of beautiful. These fans feel like they belong to something, and they do. But it's. I ain't gonna lie. I just, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't gonna lie. Well, I see people. I feel like Castle Top. But damn. <laughs> Why is he be screaming and shit? Yo, I ain't gonna lie. If I see a motherfucker like this in real life walking up to me, I... Ooh. Yo, like... I, I know these things got bullied. I'm sorry. And they do. But it's so much harder to create this sense of community on the internet than it used to be. Which is another huge reason why hip-hop is dwindling. Whereas genres like country, who are underrepresented on social media, have a very uniform aesthetic combined with amazing live shows are thriving. Now I can almost guarantee there will be a top comment on this video that looks something like this. People have been saying rap is dying since the birth of rap. Mainstream rap has never been where the quality resides and you know that. Now this argument is like, right, man, but hey, it's look, entirely- I promise you from nigga that watch Cat, he cool. You just gotta stop watching TikTok clips and the clips of him. If you actually watch his stream, that nigga's not like that at all. He just be chill. So now I'm putting in, I'm putting in a good word for my boy. Missing the point. Yes, you could make an argument that the current state of hip hop is better than it's ever been for individuals. If you want to do the hard work, you can discover oh, hours and hours, oh. thousands of high quality Damn, songs well. to indulge in. You Whatever don't really you have to spend a fortune to do it, but you'll probably be alone because your friends and community and like, are too busy to be full time music bad. enthusiasts. Again, so they're just going to keep listening to what's popular on Rap Caviar on the radio. Oh my God, they won't Ice know any songs that you like. Oh my God, I fuck with her What's her name? Fuck, I forgot her name. Ooh, hold on. What was her name? I need it. Fuck it. I, I don't I don't know YouTube shorts. I do not scroll through YouTube shorts. My my YouTube shorts is so ass. And you'll either have to listen my to oversaturated, repetitive, and mind numbing mainstream rap music, or be alone with your great music. And what good is music if you can't enjoy it, discuss it, or even argue about it with others? We want everyone to like what we like, or maybe we genuinely want to like something to fit in because we want to belong. But our society doesn't want us to all sing together and be unified. They want us divided and alone. Hip hop is not dying. Community, belonging, really nice. friendship, man, togetherness, I gotta get my and humanity right. is. W V man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm glad I watched this shit, because this shit, goddamn, I need to watch this shit. And a lot of people need to see this shit too, folks. Because look, at the end of the day, people, listen to what you want to listen to and just like, you know, don't be mad because motherfuckers want to listen to different shit or don't want to listen to some shit you want to listen to, you know? And remember, at the end of the day, hip-hop ain't down. Yeah, you can say it ain't. Like, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, uh, but... 
hip hop ain't going nowhere anytime soon.